Okay, let's talk about some more properties of that grid of numbers, or now let's think about Pascal's triangle itself. Uh, there's lots of things you can stare at about this thing, and some properties do start to occur to you. You start doing some arithmetic on the actual entries themselves. For example, look at the various rows. Let's add up all the entries in each row. So in the very top row, the zeroth row, there's only one entry, I guess it just sums to one. On the, second, on the next row, whoops, which is the one-th row, one plus one is two. Uh, next row, one plus two plus one adds up to four. One plus three plus three plus one adds up to uh, uh, eight. One plus four plus six plus four plus one, so that's 10, 11, 15 plus one makes 16. One, two, four, eight, sixteen. So I guess we're going to predict the next row adds up to 32. Uh, 10 and 10 makes 20, plus another 5 and 5 makes 30, 32. So, is it true that each row of Pascal's triangle sums to a power of 2? Uh, 2 to the 0th power, 2 to the 1st power, 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th. Hmm. Now, let's do it for the next row, but let me not actually count those up. I guess we're going to predict it's going to be, what, 64? Is it true, how could I explain philosophically why the sum of entries in this next row has to be double the previous sum. So these are, these are 32, if I double it again, I'll get 64. Is there a way I could just see, naturally, why this sum on the bottom has to be double the previous row sum? Well, let's think about it. So we're going to add the numbers 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. But let me ask, what's that 1 really? And let me be a little strange. That 1 is really this 1 plus a blank. That's 6. I'm going to add it as well. But what's 6 really? 6 is really this 1 again and that 5. So I'm going to add that 1 and that 5 to what I had before. Now I add 15. I'm going to add to my sum now. What's 15 really? It's really this 5 and this 10. This 20 is really this 10 and this 10. This 15 is really this 10 and this 5. This 6 is really this 5 and this 1. And this 1, if you like, is that 1 and a blank. So actually, summing the numbers 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1 is really summing the 1 and the 1, the 5 and the 5, the 10 and the 10, the 10 and the 10, the 5 and the 5, the 1 and the 1. It really is double the sum of the previous row. So if this was 32, this must be double again, 64. And of course, if I double the number 1 and double it, I get 2. Double it gets me 2 squared. Double 2 squared gives me 2 cubed. This is the definition of the powers of 2, doubling lots of times. So yes, it really is the powers of 2 for the sums of the rows of Pascal's triangle. In fact, this is really 2 to the 6. That's really 2 to the 5th. That's really 2 to the 4th. 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 to the 1th, 2 to the 0th. So actually, the indexing is lined up beautifully. Since we call this the 0th row, we actually get 2 to the 0 for the sum of the entries in the 0th row. And in general, the sum of the entries in the nth row, the index is lined up, is 2 to the n. Gorgeous. All right, let me just clear that space. Because let's do another property of Pascal's triangle. This time, let's do a sum again, but let's make it an alternating sum. Let's do some subtractions and additions in turn. Now, I'll do it on this triangle over here. Um, so I've got alternate subtractions and additions. The first row, doesn't, the zeroth row, excuse me, doesn't make much sense to me. But what I'm going to do is do 1 minus 1, obviously 0, minus plus. 1 take away 2, plus 1. Uh, that's negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Minus plus minus. 1 take away 3 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1. Take away 1 is 0. Minus plus minus plus. Uh, negative 3 plus 6 is 3. Take away 4 is negative 1, plus 1 is Zero. Minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Uh, this one's actually kind of symmetrical. I can see I've got a plus 10 and a negative 10. That'd be zero. I've got a negative 5 and a 5. That's going to give me zero. And a 1 and a negative 1 is going to give me zero. So now my question is, if I did this alternating sum on each row of Pascal's triangle, once I got past, past the initial little uh, hiccup, is it indeed always going to be zero? Now, some of these entries, some of these rows are symmetrical. For example, this, this 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, you can see obviously by symmetry that's going to be 0. So some of these rows are obviously going to be symmetrically ending up being 0. But the next row, for example, if I just stare at it very quickly, it doesn't look obvious to me it's going to have an alternating sum of 0. So rather than do the arithmetic, can I explain what's going on philosophically by using this particular row? Well, yeah. Let me get rid of these plus and minuses on the previous one, because obviously I'm going to relate it to the previous row. So I'm going to declutter it. Uh, let me do this in green just to be different. So I'm going to go 1 minus 6 plus minus plus minus plus. So I'm going to use a plus 1. So I'm going to actually use this 1 and this blank. So that 1 is really the sum of the two entries above it, blank and 1. Then I'm going to subtract 6. Now what am I, what's that 6 really? Well, that 6 is really that 1 and that 5. So I'm going to subtract them. So let me draw a subtraction like a dotted circle or something. 
So I subtract a 1, subtract a 5. Then I'm going to add a 15. That means I'm going to add this 5 and this 10 again. So I'm going to add this 5, I'll do that solid circles for addition. Then I'm going to subtract 20, but what's that 20? It's really this 10 and this 10. So I'm really subtracting this 10 again and subtracting this 10. Then I'm going to add 15, which is really adding this 10 and this 5. Then I'm going to subtract a 6, which is really subtracting this 5 and this 1. Then I'm going to add this 1, which is really adding this 1 and the blank. So, if I interpret the ordinary sum from one row as what it's doing as operations of the previous row, I've got this 1 that's got added and subtracted. I've got this 5 that's been subtracted and added. I've got this 10 that's been added and subtracted. Subtracted and added. Cancelling out all the way through. In fact, I can see right away that sum has to be 0 to what it's doing to the previous row. In fact, I can say it's going to work in general. The alternating sum of the entries of Pascal's triangle are sure to be 0 each and every single time. All right. Uh, there's lots of properties like this, so if you read the text below this and keep reading the lessons, we'll get some, some wild and crazy stuff. But there's one thing I teased off at the very, very beginning video that I'm going to mention again here. We are actually in a position to prove the following property, which is mighty, mighty bizarre. It's the powers of 11. Because 11 is obviously just 11, so 11 to the 1th power is just 11. But 11 to the 0th power is just 1. 11 squared is 121. 11 cubed turns out to be 1,331. 11 to the 4th power, if you get out a calculator, does turn out to be 14641, 14,641. Wow, that looks like Pascal's triangle. So why would Pascal's triangle and the powers of 11 be intimately related? Or maybe it's not true. Maybe this is just a coincidence for the first few. For example, if you get out a calculator, it kind of looks strange if you look at the answer. It doesn't seem to correspond to this fifth row. However, if you think like I do in terms of exploding dots, I could interpret this as 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 1, 1, 5 tens, 10 hundreds, most people don't let me write 10 hundreds, 10 thousands, most people don't let me write 10 thousands, 5 10 thousands, and 100 thousand. So I'm wondering if the calculator actually does give an answer that in my exploding dots interpretation looks like that. All right, turns out the answer it does. So my question to you is now, can you see why working out powers 11 is giving me basically the rows of Pascal's triangle if I ignored carrying? Now I'm gonna do this in a clever, clever way next, next lesson as well, but think about it right now, think about it for yourself. And then we'll go on to another amazing piece of connection between algebra and Pascal's triangle, which explains all this sort of stuff with ease and more.